Oh, there's my lovely chair. Great. It's great to have some physical activity, but now it's it's really nice to sit down. <sighs> you know what? Sitting at times is a lovely thing to do, but there's one problem. Nowadays, we're sitting all the time and everywhere. We are sitting even more than we are sleeping. And sitting is quickly becoming the worst health hazard of our generation, not to talk about the future generations. And the problem in sitting is that when we are sitting down, there's basically nothing happening in our bodies and in our muscles. And use it or lose it, as they say. But fortunately, I have a solution for that, which is both easy, effective and readily available. And that's standing up from the chair. <laughs> so right away, when we stand up, our whole body energy expenditure increases by 20%. And most importantly, our muscle activity increases by 200%. So <laughs> that's true. That's what science says. So when we stand up, we get rid of all of the health hazards of sitting. But as simple as it sounds, in reality, it might be much, much harder. Did you know that if monkeys are kept in a cage, they are passive 90% of the time? So if there are no options to move, these monkeys have absolutely no activity in their muscles for 90 percent of the time. This happens when their freedom is taken away. And I'm worried that one day you will become like those monkeys, or some of us have already become like those monkeys. And the reason for that is that office workers are exactly as passive as caged monkeys. Office workers are sitting 90 percent of their working hours behind their desks with absolutely no activity in their muscles. But there's one place where people, and a lot of people, are sitting even more. Do you have any idea what this place could be? Anyone? That's absolutely right. How did you know that? Wait a second. Because all of us have been sitting in school for years. To be more specific, children are sitting 97% of their class time 97%. That's 7% more than office workers, and that's 7% more than monkeys that are kept in their cages. So at first grade, children are sitting 7.3 hours a day. Uh, until eighth grade, that has increased to 10 hours a day. So at this, at the left side of the graph, at the end of their school career, these youngsters have youngsters have basically reached the sitting time they will be upholding for their entire working career. So I think that school is a great place in teaching us how to sit down throughout the days quietly with absolutely no activity in our muscles. A participant in our research pro project came to me with a problem. He was very motivated to, to meet the goal of the project, to sit less during his everyday life. However, for him it was, it was very hard. Every time he was trying to stand instead of sitting in a meet, meeting or in a coffee break, his co-workers were questioning his behavior. He couldn't meet this most simple goal because he was acting against the norms. People want to lose weight. They feel bad about not exercising three times a week, but then at the same time they might be seated for 10 hours in a bad position every single day without even thinking about it. What's even worse, they might be, might be laughing at someone who is trying to stand instead of sitting because it's not normal. So this is what I mean by physical activity paradox. I think that the first and the most important rule of exercise prescription should be to stand up from the chair. However, Sitting is normal 
although every hour of sitting per day increases the risk of type 2 diabetes by 7%. People are sitting at work, also people who started office work have 3.2 times higher risk for low back pain during their, their first year of employment. Children are sitting at school, although every hour a child is sitting increases the risk of his or her obesity by 32%. And we teach children to sit down at school, although only 10 minutes of activity would increase their attention by 14%. One day, a teacher lost her mind. She got tired in watching how children struggle to concentrate while sitting in their chairs. So she asked him to carry the chairs and the desks out of the classroom. Before that, one student appeared to learn things very badly. He had problems in every single subject because he couldn't concentrate. He couldn't solve how much is 70 minus 9 because he had rather been running around the classroom. But after the desk and chairs were carried out, he was given an exercise ball on which he could bounce while studying. And while he was doing that, he was finally able to concentrate. The first hour he got the ball, he was bouncing all the time, and later he was able to complete a math test, and he was smiling while doing that. And his grade was nine. And this is a true story. First school without desks will be opened in Finland, Finland in 2016, in Hämeenlinna. Uh, in that school, children are able to learn while moving around. They are able to do group work in various settings instead of being captivated in their desks. So the aim is to teach these children that staring at the teacher while sitting at their desks is not the only way, only way to learn. When these kids will be adults, they don't need to struggle with obesity, nor they are laughing at someone who is trying to stand instead of sitting. <coughs> So these kids are simply able to use their bodies as they are intended to be used, instead of being like monkeys in their cages. Tomorrow, when you go back to school or back to your office, ask your teacher or your boss and yourselves, do we really need to sit down? Wouldn't it just be better to stand up, have more energy, be more healthy, focused and present in the moment? And now, all of you have been luckily standing. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I hope that you have felt the joy of that little boy who was freed from his chair. Yes. Thank you. Yes.